What's up everyone? I previously created a video on how to set up DOS on the AO486 core for the Mr. FPGA. And to follow that up, I'm going to show you how to set up Windows 3.1 in AO486. So to begin, let's talk about a few requirements. I suggest you create a brand new virtual hard disk dedicated for Windows 3.1 instead of using a current VHD you're already using for games. To find out how to create a VHD, check out my video showing you how. I provided a link in the description. When you're done creating the VHD, copy it to the AO486 folder on the Mr. SD card. You also need some floppy disk images containing drivers. I provided links in the description to these floppy images. There will be an image for video drivers, an image for the Sound Blaster 16 audio driver, and an image for CD-ROM drivers. Download these and copy them to the AO46 folder on your Mr. SD card. I have a subfolder in there called Floppy where I store all my floppy images. Finally, you'll need installation disk images for both DOS 6.22 and Windows 3.1. These programs are copyrighted, so I can't provide links for these, but you can easily find them doing a Google search. I'm sure there's an archive out there that will have them. Once you've obtained these images, then also copy them to the AO46 folder. Okay, so let's begin the installation. Like I mentioned before, I recommend using a VHD dedicated for Windows 3.1 and not use DOS applications. The first thing we are going to do is install DOS on the VHD we created earlier. Boot up the AO46 core on the MISTER and bring up its menu. You bring up the menu by hitting the Windows key and F12. Let's first set up the boot order by moving down to hardware. Make sure boot first is set to floppy hard disk. Then go back. Then go to floppy A and load up the disk one floppy image that contains the MS-DOS installation. Then go to IDE 0-0 and select the VHD that was created for installing DOS and Windows. When you're done, hit reset and apply. AO46 will restart and then the DOS setup will begin. Hit enter on the screen. Select configure unallocated disk space. You'll be asked to restart the computer. Hit enter to do that. When AO46 restarts, the MS-DOS setup will start formatting the VHD. Then you will be asked about some system settings. Make any changes you need to here, then select the settings are correct. I'm leaving things as is. Leave the installation directory as is and press enter here. And the setup will start installing. You will eventually be asked to insert floppy disk too. To load the next floppy, bring up the AO46 menu. Then select floppy A. And choose the second disk image. Then hit escape to return to the DOS installation. And hit enter to continue the installation. Do the same for floppy disk 3. When the installation reaches the end, we need to unmount the floppy so that the DOS setup doesn't come up again. To unmount, bring up the AO46 menu, then select floppy A. Now hit backspace to unmount. Hit escape, then hit enter to restart AO46. You will be taken to a DOS prompt. It's now time to install Windows. So let's load up the floppy disk 1 image that contains the Windows installation. Then hit escape on the AO46 menu. Type A colon to get to the floppy drive. And type setup to begin the Windows installation. Hit enter on the first screen. Then select express setup by hitting enter. The Windows setup will start copying files to help it with the installation process. You will eventually be asked to insert this too. Do it the same way we did with DOS. Open the AO46 menu and select floppy A. Then go to where you have your Windows 3.1 disk saved and choose disk 2. And hit escape to exit the AO46 menu. Then hit enter to continue the setup. When the copying of files is done, you will be taken to the next step of the Windows setup. Enter a name and company here, then click on continue. Confirm by hitting continue again. 
and you will be asked for disk 3. Repeat the process of loading a disk image, and then click continue. Also, load the floppy images for the rest of the disks when asked for them. When the progress is done, you will be asked to install a printer. Click Cancel here. The setup will start configuring applications. On this window, select OK to add the MS-DOS editor to the Windows Program Manager, and the installation is done. If you want, you can run the tutorial, but I'll just skip it. Let's reboot, but before we do, let's unmount the floppy disk image. Again, you unmount it by going to floppy A and then hitting Backspace. Now choose Reboot to restart AO486. We're back at the command prompt. Before we go back to Windows, let's install the Sound Blaster 16 sound drivers. Remember to use the floppy image I provided in the description. First, let's make sure the FN mode setting is set to OPL3. Bring up the AO46 menu, move down to Audio and Video. In FM mode, make sure it's set to OPL3. Go back when it's set. And now let's go to Floppy A to load the Sound Blaster driver image. Here it is, named SB16 underscore AO486. Select it. Now go to the A drive by typing A colon. To see what the command is to install the driver, type DIR. We see a list of files, and within them is a file called install.exe. That's the installation program, so type install. Here, press enter. Leave everything here as is and press enter again. These settings here will be correct, so hit enter yet again to begin the driver installation. After the install is done, you will see the changes that the setup will do to the autoexec.bat and the config.sys files. Hit enter to continue and apply those changes. When asked about replacing a file, just choose the backup option. The sound driver installation is done, now unmount the floppy image. Remember. Just hit backspace when you select floppy A on the AO46 menu. Hit F10 on the setup after unmounting the floppy image. This will reboot AO46. We're back at the DOS prompt. To load Windows, just type Win. Windows will load and you will hear its startup sound. You will also be told that an audio program group was created. This was done by the Sound Blaster installation disk we ran. Let's now test the audio further by playing an audio file and then a MIDI file. Click OK here and then close the open windows. Open Accessories, then look for Media Player and open it. Click File, Open, in the file name text box type star.wav. Double click on any of the files that show up and click on the play button. A sound should play. Next, let's play a MIDI file. Click File, Open, in the file name text box, type star.mid, and double click on canyon.mid. You will probably get an error, ignore it and just load the MIDI file again. It seems that Media Player throws me an error every time I load a MIDI file after playing a WAV file. Click play, and you should be able to hear the MIDI file now. Okay, so now that the sound drivers are installed and working, 
we now have to install the video drivers. Remember, a link to the floppy image containing the video driver is in the description. Windows is currently only displaying 16 colors. Installing the video drivers will let Windows display more colors and also use higher resolutions. So close all applications and Windows now. Open the main program group, then open the Windows setup program. Click on options, then click change system settings. On the display dropdown, scroll down and select other display requires disk from OEM. On this dialog box, make sure that you see A colon backslash in its text box. If not, just type A colon backslash. Then load the floppy image that contains the Windows 3.1 video driver. I provided a link to the floppy image in the description. We see the floppy image here. It's called ET4000 underscore Win31. Hit enter to mount it, and then go back to Windows. Now that the floppy is mounted, click on OK. We get a list of resolutions and color depths. Let's choose ET4000, 640 by 480, and 256 colors. With this driver, I couldn't get the 65,000 color mode to work, but the 32,000 color mode does work. 256 colors is the most compatible with games anyway, so it's the mode that you should be using the most. Click OK, and click OK again to begin the driver installation. You will be asked for the Windows installation disk 1. This is not the video driver disk. This is the Windows installation disk. Mount that disk. Hit enter or click OK after it's mounted. Then you will be asked for the Windows installation disk 2. Again, this is not the driver disk. Mount that disk 2 and click OK. Finally, you will be asked to mount the video driver disk again. Go ahead and do that and then click OK to finish the driver installation. Click on Restart Windows to apply the driver. You can see that the desktop colors now look a little different, confirming that the driver was installed. The final thing we need to do to set up Windows 3.1 is to install the CD-ROM driver. Close all the windows in the Program Manager. Open the Accessories group. Then look for and open the classic Notepad application. When Notepad is open, we want to now load the autoexec.bat file. Click on File, Open. On the file name text box, type C colon backslash autoexec.bat and then hit Enter. The file will open. Add this line to the bottom of the file. LH space C colon backslash DOS backslash mscdex.exe space forward slash D colon optical. Save the document. Now click on file, open In the file name text box type C colon backslash config.sys and hit enter. A new file opens up. At the end of it, type device high equals C colon backslash drivers backslash videcdd dot sys forward slash D colon optical. Save the document and exit. Now we need to copy the CD-ROM driver from a floppy image to a folder on the C drive. I provide a link to the floppy image in the description. Close all windows on the program manager and then open the main group. Open the file manager. Let's create a folder on the C drive now. Double click on the C colon folder icon. Then click on file, create directory, name the folder drivers. And we can now see the new folder. Let's bring up a new file manager window by clicking on the window menu. Then click new window. Next, let's mount the CD-ROM image obtained from the video description. We see it here called CD-ROM.IMG. Hit enter to mount it, and then go back to Windows. After it's mounted, click on the A drive icon on the new window we opened. We can see the driver file. 
Drag it to the drivers folder on the other window. Confirm by clicking on yes. And we're done installing the driver. We just need to reboot AO46 to apply the driver. Close the file manager, then exit windows. Unmount the CD-ROM floppy image. Then reboot AO46 by hitting reset and apply. DOS will reboot and now we will see some messages relating to the CD-ROM drive. Load windows by typing win. To confirm the CD-ROM works, let's open up the file manager again. And we can now see the new D drive icon representing the CD-ROM. Let's load up a CD-ROM ISO. Bring up the AO486 menu, scroll down to IDE 1-0. Now just navigate to where you have an ISO saved and selected. Exit the AO486 menu, and now click on the CD-ROM icon in the file manager. We can now see the CD-ROM's files. We are done setting up windows, but there is one more thing you might want to configure. If you want to avoid typing win every time you load up AO46 to run windows and instead have windows automatically load, then let me show you how to do that. Close the file manager and then open notepad again. It's in the accessories group. Load the autoexec.bat file like we did before. On the last line, type win. Save the document and then exit. To test this, let's exit Windows. Then reboot AO486. DOS now automatically loaded Windows. And we are finally done now. You should create a backup of the Windows 3.1 VHD, so if it gets damaged or you find yourself with an issue that you cannot solve, then you'll have yourself a clean image to fall back to. Now all that's left to do is to test out some games and software. The Microsoft Entertainment Pack was a series of game collections that contained simple but fun games to help you unwind from work or school. There was a total of five releases of this series. Games range from simple card games to more advanced puzzle games. Some favorites of mine are Tripeaks, Tetris, and Tips Challenge. But there are many more good ones to enjoy. I really wish Microsoft had continued to port these to later versions of Windows or even continue the series with new games. Microsoft also had released a game collection for Windows 3.1 with classic arcade games. It was called Microsoft Arcade and it contained arcade ports of Atari games. These ports were pretty good. They look and sound just like their arcade counterparts. Now to test a game with some multimedia features. Myst is a graphical adventure game that became the best selling PC game for its time. It was the game to get if you had a multimedia PC. And I also tested Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia to further test the multimedia capabilities of Windows 3.1 in AO486. From a series of more than 4,000 photos taken by the Voyager space probes, this... So that's how you install Windows 3.1 in AO486. Let me know about your experience. Next up will be a video on installing and configuring Windows 95. So keep an eye out for it. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.